I'm looking through the photos. So just to put everything into perspective here, I was outside. I took a whole bunch of different photos with different cameras. So I had my Nikon, I had two different lenses, I tried two different focal lengths. I tried my S100 camera, which is a point and shoot camera. The iPhone 12, I tried the S20 uh, phone. And I also had pictures that I took from earlier in the day that was of that uh, coin that was on the ground. So I've organized all the images as best as possible. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to process these in 3df Zephyr. So let's get started here. And I'm just going to do this in no particular order. So I've got a bunch of uh, close ups that I took, and I'm just dragging and dropping them in. So here we go. There's a bunch of those here. Then I'm going to go back and do the iPhone photos. Then I have the S20 photos. Then I'm going to do the S100. So that was the point and shoot camera. And then I also have all the Nikon images. So the Nikon images are again, the uh, 18 to 140 lens, I think it was. And so there's um, some shots that were taken at 18 millimeters, some at 140. And then I've also mixed in the uh, 40 millimeter macros that are in there. So I'm going to drop those in there too. So I got a lot of photos in here right now, a whole bunch that's in here. So I have 159 images. Okay, great. So I'm going to go next I'm going to go next. So the choice of category now uh, may be important. And I guess I'll just say a couple of things. Normally, um, urban, okay, this particular setting, you'll see that it says um, the uh, choose this instead of the close range category if you're mixing different types of photos, especially if the whole data set is not shot from the same distance. So typically, I would choose the urban setting and then just go with uh, default or deep. Um, but I'm actually going to run an experiment. Um, this is actually all close range stuff. So I want to see what happens if I choose close range and the default setting and then go forward from there. So like I said, normally choose the urban setting. Okay. That's what I would use over here. If you're mixing up a lot of stuff and, uh, each of these presets has different things that it's looking for, but we're going to do an experiment here. We're going to do close range and default and we're going to go next. Okay. Okay. So the, uh, sparse reconstruction has completed. And what I'm going to do is just inspect all the images that are here. And I want to see if they've been reconstructed and I can just scroll my mouse down. You'll see that I'm scrolling through the images. And so far we're getting yes, 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 which is good. And all the way at the bottom, everything has been reconstructed. That's great. So that's a very positive sign. Let's just make sure we can look at this and make sure it looks okay. And again, this wasn't like a deep reconstruction. Now you can see a little bit of noise. Okay, so there's a few points here, a little bit of noise here and there, which is not surprising. Um, if you look at the camera positions, so you see I have the, uh, this was the telephoto or the 140 millimeter setting. And then here I had some, uh, I had probably the, what did I have here? The macro, probably the 40 millimeter macro from farther away. Um, this is, uh, some of the phones are here. So, um, yeah, this is, uh, looking pretty good. I'm really surprised. Oh, and don't forget if you get up close here, all these photographs that are here. Okay. That's all from earlier when I took the close up images of that particular coin. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I like that. And what I'm going to do quickly here is just check the orientation. Actually, what I may do is just tell it which way is up. I'm going to shut off the cameras. Um, and I will just tell it which way is up. So I'm going to say the axis. So I'm just going to go here to here. This is the up axis. And let's see. Yeah, that's pretty close, close enough. The other thing I'm going to do is just let me check the bounding box. Okay, that's all over the place. I'm going to reset that and I'm going to reposition it. So going forward, so the bounding box is just going to tell you uh, anything that's inside is what is actually going to be reconstructed. It's not going to do anything outside of this. And so I'm just going to narrow it down so I don't have a reconstruction in areas that I don't need. So that's okay on the top. I'm okay with that. And back here, uh, somewhere around here, I don't need to go. I just want a little piece of wall, part of the floor here or the ground in front. Yeah, that would be okay. And did I clip off? No, that's okay. All right. So that's good for the bounding box. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and do a reconstruction. So I'm going to go advanced. I'm going to go to the dense point cloud uh, generation. I'm going to do all the cameras 
And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do close range and default. Okay, now I could do high details, uh, which would take a while. I just want to do the default and then see what happens. So let me do that. I'm going to go next. Just finish the dense point point cloud reconstruction. And you can see here uh, that we've got some dense points. And right around this area, that's really what I'm interested in. Oh yeah, that's going to look pretty good. You can see how the density of points here is much better. You can see kind of where the photos are taking and how they're overlapping too. And there's the uh, coin there. So I don't want to give this away right away, but you can get a sense of where I'm going with this thing. Um, now you can see there's a lot of noise. There's glass here. There were reflections. And so there's a lot of problems through the glass. And that's very typical. That's not something that um, is unique to the software. It's just the way it goes when you're dealing with uh, reflections and that sort of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause here. I'm going to spend a little bit of time just cleaning up some of this noise. Uh, all right. So I just noticed that while I was uh, rolling around here in the dense point cloud, um, when I got close to this area here, you'll see that I've got this double line. And so I wasn't paying attention before, but this is obviously a problem. There's been some kind of an issue between these close up images and the ones that are farther out. And actually, if you look over here, you'll see that even the wall, it's sort of stepped over here. So there's some ghosting and that's clearly an issue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to step one and I'm going to see if I process this with the urban setting. Uh, that's the one that's actually recommended. This was kind of an experiment doing the close range and see if the urban setting is going to help. And uh, so let's see what we get and if this uh, little portion here becomes corrected. So uh, I'll just step back. All right, so we've got our dense reconstruction here. And if I look around, let me shut off these cameras because they get annoying. Uh, you'll see right off the bat, like this area here is much, much better. All right, this looks all in line. Very good. That's that's what we wanted before. So uh, clearly, you know, sometimes uh, with photogrammetry, especially when you're, uh, you know, doing what I'm doing, which is experimenting, it's really a process of trial and error. And, you know, this way you can figure out, you know, when it works, when it doesn't. And we've just learned here that using close range has some risks, uh, especially with the photos that I took, which were, in fact, really, really close. Uh, most of the photos that were taken far away by the uh, the phone cameras and even the Nikon digital camera that was farther away when I took the overall, they were great. But these ones where I went in close, Okay, they caused a problem. But here, right now, that looks pretty good to me. So what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, pause here. I'm going to create a mesh and then I'm going to go on. I'll create a textured mesh. Okay, the mesh is done. And you can see I cleaned out the windows or whatever. I, I did that before with the dense point cloud, so it didn't build it into the mesh. But this looks better. That looks better. And we've got some decent detail on this coin. So that's a great start. So we still have to add textures. And uh, I'm going to quickly do that. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, before I do that, I might even jump in and just see if I can fill in some of these holes or maybe not. But um, let's see what it looks like. Uh, when I come back, there'll probably be a final textured model. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, so we just finished the textured mesh generation. And let's go in and have a look at what we got. So uh, I did some filling. I just kind of very quickly uh, got these uh, windows filled. They're not perfect or whatever, but they're just projecting some textures on here. But what I'm really interested in is how well did this spot over here do with the coin? And I think this really makes the point about this particular video. And that is that you can mix uh, different types of cameras to get you an incredible amount of detail. And so you can imagine if you are on a drone and you're flying high up, you've got a very, very large scale. You're capturing objects which are very, very far away. But here, uh, what you can see is, you know, we can combine that getting closer and closer and closer. So if this was an accident scene, if this was a shooting scene and you wanted to fly from the air and then get into, you know, small scrapes on the ground or cartridge cases on the ground, or, you know, if this was an archaeological site and you wanted to get into some of these small details, this goes to show you that it is definitely all possible with photogrammetry. So on that note, I want to say thanks very much, everybody, and we'll see you next time on Click3D. Take care.